This video is on how to use the web reader in the Canvas environment. Begin by clicking on the web reader activation button, which is the little tab on the left side with the triangle on it. When you click on it, it flies up to the top of the page and you can pull it wherever you want by grabbing that handle. Now, if you click listen, it will play from the top to the bottom of the page. I'm just going to select a little bit here and then I can click listen from the pop-up or from the listen button. Each person has different learning preferences. As you can see with this, what I have done is I have temporarily paused it and we have play and stop still there, but I want to talk about two other buttons. The two buttons are skip backwards and skip forward five seconds. Now with these two buttons, if I start the playing again, I'm going to skip around some so that we can see some things. Notice also that what we're listening to is underlined with a dotted line that tells you the part you have selected. You may prefer to listen. Did you know if you employ or to read different learning preferences, each person has different learning to interact with studying? Now, I skipped several times backward and forward during that playing. Notice now our pause or resume button has the counterclockwise circle with the play. If I click on it, it will replay the highlighted portion. When we look at volume, we deliver volume at the maxed out level. This allows the student to adjust the volume off of their headset, their earbuds, their computer, however they want to. However, if they so desired, they could also adjust it here. Up is louder, down is softer. The reading speed is always the speedometer. If you push it up, it goes faster. Push it down, it goes slower. Different students may like different speeds. The X, of course, turns off the player. When we look at the three little lines over here in the bottom of the Listen button, it is the Open and Close toolbar, and that's referring to the Lower toolbar. When we look at the Lower toolbar, let's first look at Settings. And with Settings, we can choose to have our highlighting on or off. We can highlight the word and sentence, the sentence only, or no highlighting. I'm going to choose the word and sentence. The next thing we can do is choose our word, sentence, and text color. If we are colorblind, then you either want the word underlined or the sentence underlined. You don't want them both underlined because we have no double underlining. With that said, if it is just general reading, you may prefer the sentence. If there is heavy vocabulary within the reading, then you may want to choose the word to be underlined because that will help the student associate the written word to the oral word. And lots of times students mispronounce words in their mind when they're reading them so they don't make those connections. At the bottom, we have some general settings. First off, automatic scrolling. We want that turned on so that our player follows us down the page. The pop-up uh, text menu is the little menu you saw that had listen and dictionary. In yours it will also have translate on it. And I like to close things automatically. You can put whatever amount of time you want. It is measured in seconds. For instance, if you wanted it to stay open 200 seconds, you just type that in, or you could use the up or down arrows. I'm going to change it back to my 2 seconds. And we found that 2 seconds is normally how long most people want the menu up. However, if you have someone that has some movement disabilities, then they may need longer. We don't like to use do not close because the menu sits in front of the words. So when it's reading and highlighting the words, when it comes to where the menu is, that's behind the menu so you can't see it. So I would suggest automatically close, but if you need a longer time frame, then you can do so. 
Now at the top of every text box we have, there is this menu that has play, it will also have pause, stop, increase font, decrease font, it has the volume, this time it's horizontal instead of vertical, and we have reading speed, horizontal instead of vertical. Personally, I like to adjust my reading speed on the horizontal scale because I can see easier how much it is moving. We're on the vertical scale. It's kind of hard to tell for me how much I am moving it. This last tool that we have has a capital A, a lowercase a, and gear on it. And when you click on it, this is our text box settings, how the font looks within a text box. Normal is about a 12 point. You can move it from minus 1 to plus 7. Now, I will choose a plus 2. With font, we have the Times New Roman and the Career New for the serif fonts. For the sans serif, we have Arial. Open Sans and Comic Sans. Now we also have the Open Dyslexic font. And for those of you not familiar with the Open Dyslexic font, it's a relatively new font that helps students with dyslexia be able to isolate each letter individually so they can use phonetics to read so they're sounding out the words instead of having to look at the shape of the word and learn how to read in that manner. Now text colors. Sometimes we don't want a white background with black text on it, even though that is the most accessible combination. We may want to soften that a little bit with a light yellow, or a light pink, or light blue. We may want a stark contrast of yellow on black, or soften that a little bit with light blue on black. I'm going to go back to black on light yellow. As you can see, we've made our selections. If I want to blow this box up, these arrows in the upper right hand corner allow me to make the box the size of our window. Let's go back and this time go over to our text mode tool. When I click on text mode, I can see now the open dyslexic font showing here with a yellow background and it is a plus two. If I look at this very closely, I see that my D leans to the right and my B leans to the left just like you would do with your students by putting your fists together and leaning your thumbs out to help teach them the difference between B and D. And if you flip that, the difference between P and Q. And in this you can see that the P leans out to the left with the tail. I don't have a Q up here, but the Q would lean out to the right with the tail. Now, that's the dyslexic font. Like I said, it is a relatively new font, so if you're interested in using that with your students, you could. Remember, I can expand this box out, but let's say I really don't like that yellow background. I want a blue background, so I'm going to change it to black on light blue, and I now have that. These text box settings that we're seeing right up here at the top are available in any text box, so keep that in mind. Okay, the next thing we have is our voices. Now on your voices you're going to have American English female and American English male, and you may be saying, well why do I want both male and female? Some students prefer if the instructor or teacher is a male, they want a male voice. If the instructor or the teacher is female, they want a female voice. Other oral learners associate a voice with a subject, and they may then choose to have, uh, for their sciences, they may want a female voice, and for their history, they may want an male voice or vice versa, but it gives the student the choice. I'm going to choose the female voice. 
Our next tool is Read on Hover. And with Read on Hover, when we turn it on, I'm going to go right up here, we see the green dot on the tool that says it's turned on. And as I move my mouse around, it is loading Now, as I was moving my mouse around, it was going to different sections and loading the area that it landed on. This is a way of skim reading your work. Now, if you don't like that, you can turn it off by clicking on it again, and we see the dot is gone. One of the great tools for students who are ADD, ADHD, or have some cognitive challenges to where they need things as a snippet of information is the Enlarge Text tool. And when I click on it, just like the Read on Hover, the green dot is there. Now, I highlight some information. I'm going to go down to, let's say, Library Services and just highlight this first amount. I'm going to click listen. Again, I can do this from the pop-up or from the player, either one. When students are asked to do a report or paper that involves research. Now, notice it is enlarged. We see it at the bottom. Notice what it is playing or showing in the window is in a white box up here. I can make this larger. it keeps going or I can make it smaller that's up to me how I want it and if I want to turn it back on I can hit play they are generally flummoxed and it's finished playing but I still see the green dot on the enlarged text tool anything I listen to right now will have the enlarged text turned on I have to click on it to turn it off. Our next tool is the page mask. It looks like an equals. With this, it is a brightened window that we can scroll up and down by just pushing it with our mouse. We can make it larger by clicking on the plus or smaller by clicking on the minus. And we can use it in several ways. One, it keeps our focus on a select amount of material. Again, for this same population, ADD, ADHD, uh, cognitive challenges where you need to stay on focus. It can also be used as a reading ruler for those students that have eye movements to where they tend to get offline. Another group that it's good for is students that are reading material that is very heavy, in fact, that they need to learn. It keeps them focused on smaller snippets so they can take their notes very easily on this, which really helps them expand upon what they are doing. Like I said, you can make it larger with the plus, smaller with the minus, and you push it up and down when you're tired of using it. You press the X. Our next tool is Download to MP3. And with the download to MP3, when you click on it, I'm going to change this now on the fly back to Open Sans, a normal font, and a white background. And we see how quickly it could change. Again, this is a text box. This is just saying we're going to use this MP3 for our own use. We're not going to sell it to anybody or give it to anyone else. So we say agree and download. We get a very unique title filled with letters and numbers. I'm going to rename it the name of the document, which is Learner Support. So I've given it a name that is appropriate. So you may want to say something along those lines to your students. Click Save. Now, the MP3 
is then transferred to your computer where you said to save it. But if your student wants to move it to their MP3 device, it depends on the MP3 device. There's not a standard set of instructions. For instance, I have an iPhone. If I want to listen to it on my iPhone, I have to go through iTunes to get it there. I have another MP3 player that works like a flash drive, and all I do is open it up, and then it shows in my list of drives, and I just simply drag my MP3 over to it. So it will depend on what MP3 player your student has as to what they need to use. Going on along this, we have help. And help, again, it's a text box, so we have those commands up there at the top. But if you go down here to the middle, it has keyboard navigation. And with keyboard navigation, it's telling you how to set up an access key, which is normally a modifier and a letter. And we see that settings is whatever modifier we chose and the S. If we go on down, we have the reading language tool. Remember that was your male or female voice. It is the modifier in R. But we've already used R, so we can't use R in read on hover, so we use the H. But if we go on down further, text mode, the T has been used already, the M has been used already, so they used V. The letters they tried to use were close to the space bar so that the student would have an easy reach. Those keystrokes are provided in a document that is in the packet that you can download from the internet that will be included with the email where I send you this link. Now we have two other features to look at. One of them is the dictionary. So I'm going to highlight the word benefit and dictionary pops up. So I don't know what it means, so I'm going to look it up. So I click on dictionary and sometimes you'll get a message the first time you use the dictionary uh, since your cache has been cleared that will say, remember, this is an online dictionary. But the way the dictionary works is just like a paper dictionary. It's not going to list every word. It's going to list the root words. Here we can see benefit is both a noun and a verb. So the student has to decide which one it is to know which definition applies. If I look up a word such as helps with the S, notice it can't find it because helps the root word is help and the suffix is s. Again, notice that you have the text box controls. So what we do is we go back and highlight just the root word and then look it up just like you would do in a regular dictionary. Because remember all those suffixes are normally in parentheses after the root word. Here we can see it can be a noun, a verb, or an interjection. So the student has to decide how it's being used. Now I had the question before I got dropped off the internet due to the storm is what about translate? Well I had to go to another learning environment to show you this because my demo site for Canvas doesn't have the translate tool turned on. We had it turned off so that we could illustrate how to do that. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose different learning preferences and I want to translate it. So it would appear just like this one does right underneath dictionary. And when I click on translate, I have to choose what language do I want it to translate to. I'm going to say Spanish. And here it tells you I am using Google Translate. So I say, I understand. If I pull down, you can see you still have that text box control and it is Google Translate. Now, let me explain about Google Translate in case you don't know. Google Translate works for words or phrases. It does not work for sentences 
or four paragraphs or whole papers. You'll get a gist of what it's saying in those cases, but it's not going to be accurate because Google Translate does not change the sentence structure, and each language has its unique sentence structure. So that's what I mean. You might get a gist of what it's talking about, but it's not going to be exact. So keep that in mind. You're doing words or phrases. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is Canvas quizzes. Now, your web reader will play on anything in Canvas with the exception of documents or files, PowerPoints, PDFs, Excel, something like that, it cannot play those, but it can do anything else. So we're going to take a test. All right, I'm on my test. I click on my web reader and I highlight the question. Now I don't want to highlight any more than the one question. And this is a two question quiz, but I only want one question. So I'm going to click listen. Which web reader tool allows you to make the font larger? Group of answer choices. Did you hear how it said group of answer choices? That's because the way the questions are structured, our player is picking up that it's moving from question to answer. So it's telling the student. And if they are an auditory learner, that's an excellent piece for them to hear. Now we'll go ahead and play these three answers. Enlarged text, zoom text, enlarged reading. Okay, the reason why I only highlighted one question was because you don't want to play the whole test. You only want to play one question at a time because you're only concentrating on one question at a time. Well, the name of the tool that allows you to make the font larger is called enlarged text. All right. Let's look at question two. The tools to change the background color and font type are only found under the settings tool. Group of answer choices. True. False. If we think back, that was those text box controls and they were on any text box. So. It wasn't just under settings, it was any time we had a text box, which was also your translate, your dictionary, and your text mode. So that would be false. Then we would submit our quiz and be done with it. Now, at this point, I've covered all the information that we have on the web reader. If you have questions, please email me directly at ginger, G-I-N-G-E-R, dot Dewey, D as in David, E-W-E-Y, at readspeaker, R-E-A-D-S-P-E-A-K-E-R, dot com, and I will answer those questions. 